Hi, welcome back to The Dark Room. My name's Richard, and today I'm going to be talking about an all analog method for making large scale transparent negatives for old processes like cyanotype, um, Van Dyke Brown, platinum prints, all the like. Um, I love digital negatives. Pictorico and this ability to print digital transparencies is incredibly impressive and opens up tons of doors uh, to creating and exploring these alternative processes and historical processes. But I have strived to see how we could make all of the process happen within the darkroom or within analog process in some way. So today I'm going to show you how to do exactly that, how to take any negative um, of any size, 35 millimeter, four by five, whatever, and to create a new negative that is transparent and able to be used in all processes that is of a size of your choosing uh, and to do it all here within the darkroom. So first, let's go over what you are going to need. Obviously, you are going to need a darkroom, just a standard black and white processing darkroom. Right now, I have Dektal uh, set up as my developer, standard dilution, everything the same. You are going to need some RC paper that will end up being the same size as your negative. So here I have some Ilford multigrade. Uh, I highly, highly recommend using multigrade paper because we are going to take advantage of that filtering uh, to adjust our contrast during the process. Next, you are going to need uh, some orthofilm. Here I have some Arista ortholithofilm 3.0. Um, this is an 11 by 14 size. You want to have your paper and your orthofilm size be the same uh, or at least close. Um, on Freestyle Photo, they sell uh, this Arista ortholithofilm in all different shapes and sizes, much bigger than this, smaller than this. Um, it also can come pre-cut to fit into four by five cameras or other um, large format cameras. Of course, uh, this film being orthochromatic, it is only sensitive to blue and green light. It is not sensitive to red light. Uh, a very important note, I do have an amber safe light set up in this dark room, but I need to make sure to turn that off and use only red safe lights uh, on this ortho film because it will fog the paper under an amber light. So keep that in mind. And the final thing that you are going to need is to have a sheet of glass or some other way to make a nice clean contact print. Um, you are going to need an enlarger, of course, to make your initial enlargements uh, and to make your contact prints. The process is actually extremely simple. Uh, it's very straightforward. Basically, we are first going to select our negatives, put them in our enlarger, uh, and we are going to make an extremely low contrast positive print uh, onto our RC paper. I'm going to call that an intermediary print um, because, of course, we'll have a photo negative, uh, which we will then project onto this photo negative paper, uh, which will give us a very, very low contrast positive. Then, once that's all dry and ready, we are going to take it and contact print it onto our orthofilm, which is also photo negative. Um, a quick note, ortholithofilm is extremely high contrast. It'd be like filter grade five. It's very high contrast. Um, of course, if you're not familiar with this, you can use it to create instant transparencies from your negatives. So if you shoot negatives, uh, and you print them directly onto this ortho film. Uh, you can develop it like normal paper under your red safe lights, and you will get a transparency uh, of your image, which is very cool. Also, if you happen to shoot slide film, which I don't, but if you do and you have positive film, you can directly print it onto your ortho film and it will give you a negative. Uh, I believe it would probably have very, very high contrast. Uh, because this is a high contrast paper and slide film is inherently very high contrast. So, you know, your mileage may vary there. But without further ado, let's load up our negatives and start making our initial um, intermediary positive images. Okay, so I am 
Assuming here in this tutorial that you are familiar with darkroom printing, so I'm not going to get too much into the nitty gritty, um, but in case you're not, I'm just going to show you the basics. Uh, so I have my paper, the safe lights are on, which is why the ISO is probably abysmal. I'm going to open up my paper. Let's take out five or six sheets and just put them into our paper safe. So I'm planning to make four of these negatives here. So let's get six sheets and close this box back up and put it away. Let's put these into our paper safe here. I already have some other papers in here, uh, but this is the only RC uh, 1114 in here. So I'm going to take one sheet out and I'm going to make some test strips. Test strips are vitally important so that you are using your paper efficiently. Uh, here I have a little tiny roto trim, uh, which is really nice. You can use scissors or any other paper cutter, of course. I'm gonna go the short way and cut these about between a half inch and an inch. Here I've got my little test strips uh, and I will probably be ripping these up even further as we go. Uh, so I'll see you over by the enlarger. And of course, I am putting these into my paper safe so that they are easily accessible for me and I don't have to go opening my box a ton of times. So let's head to the enlarger. All right, so here we are over at the enlarger. Uh, this is a Saunders LPL. Uh, I'm printing six by seven film right now, so it is uh, boomed all the way up, but we are also going to be doing some 35 mil later. So I have it all focused here using my grain focuser. Yep, looks great. I'm going to stop down a couple stops. I'm at 5.6 right now. So let's go down a couple stops uh, to F11. And now I can kind of just barely see that light. Uh, I am using the Saunders LPL that is meant for black and white. So it has the Ilford multi-grade filtering built in and I'm going to set that filter all the way to filter double zero. I want as little contrast as possible. Uh, and of course I'm going to turn off the white light so that I'm now filtering my light. Um, if your enlarger doesn't have these, if it's a color enlarger, you can figure out uh, and write down the values that equate to the Ilford multi-grade system or on eBay for pretty uh, inexpensively, you can get a filter set like this uh, that has all of the filters and a little under the lens element so that you can filter your light. Um, so I am going to make a test strip. Here I've got one of the thinner ones and I'm actually gonna rip it to like a four inch section. I don't need to use the whole thing for this. Uh, and let me change camera angles so you can see exactly what I'm doing and what I'm looking at. All right, so here we are with a top-down shot of our easel here. I'm gonna put this uh, test strip back in our paper safe for a second uh, and just explain the process of what we're gonna do. So here I've got my timer set to three seconds. Uh, looking great. Let's open back up. So here we can see a kind of very faint version of our image. Uh, what I want to do actually before I put our test strip down is to figure out where the most dynamic range kind of is. In this example here, uh, it's going to be right there. So we have these very dark beams and then we have this very bright white window here. Let's stop down our two stops. Now you can probably barely see that. Um, and let's turn off our enlarger. Okay, so let's grab our little test strip here. There it is. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold the test strip behind my back so that when I turn this light on and off again, uh, I'm going to be able to put my finger down on where it is that I want my test strip to go. So uh, let's turn the light on piece of paper is behind my back. Let's do one kind of like this. I can get some of the brick, some of the window, and some of that there. So let's put that there, turn off the light. I'm just gonna memorize where it is. So I'm staring right here. Perfect. 
Let's put down our test strip just like that. And now I'm gonna take two little pieces of just my darkroom masking tape, like really little pieces. And I'm just going to tape that down gently. Next, I want to grab a, uh, I just use cardboard as my little masking tools. So I have a bunch of cardboard that I've cut uh, and I am just going to lay it down except for just a kind of sliver of that and then hit our timer. There's our three seconds there. Let's move it down a touch. And I like to make my test strips pretty fine. Go. I think we'll get about four or five clicks out of this. Let's go one more there. I'm gonna hold this one down. And let's call that the end there. So then I'll do one more when it's fully uh, exposed. Great. So now we can develop this up. And since we have five sections, we will have uh, three, six, nine, 12, and 15. Uh, all of those times will be shown here. So let's go over to the developer and develop that up. Uh, so I really love to have one of these little clamp lights um, with a little red safe light bulb inside of it. And I like to just clamp it right here on the sink just so I can kind of see what's happening near the developer. Here's our test strip. Obviously I have a pretty big tray set up because we're doing 1114 today. And I highly recommend just going out and getting a cheap little stopwatch. Um, I just like that as a way to gauge my development. So let's throw this in here, make sure it gets covered, start my stopwatch, and I'm gonna develop it for one minute. We're starting to see that image show up about 20 seconds in. All right, there we are at a minute. So let's transfer over to our stop. I'm gonna run it through the whole process uh, and I'll see you after the wash. Okay, so that's our minute in the fix. Uh, and I'm going to transfer this over to our wash bath and turn that on. Uh, and now, since I know that I am the only one working in this dark room, I'm solo in here, uh, and I know that all of my paper safes are closed and secure, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the lights on uh, so that I can just look at my little test strip. So there's our lights. Of course, that is risky business to do that, so be very careful. Uh, and yeah, so let's take a look at this test strip. All right, so it is definitely looking a little bit uh, light. It's a little bit not as dark as I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is open up my lens uh, one stop to f8. I'm going to increase my test strip uh, setting to four seconds instead of three. Uh, and yeah, I will meet you back here when I have a fresh test strip. All right, let's take a look here. This one is looking a lot better, um, but our highlights are still a little dark, so we're going to have to burn those in. We have plenty of room still for those shadows to come back into play, uh, so I am going to uh, just extend my time. I don't want to open up the lens any more than it already is. I'm at f8, I like that aperture. Uh, so I'm just going to start extending from here. This would be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 seconds is where we're at right now. So I'm just going to start with a 20 second exposure and then do more four second increments on top of that. Okay, so just to explain that a little bit, um, I saw that even my longest time, 20 seconds, was still not as dark as I'd like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, uh, let's say a 25 second exposure. So I'm going to increase my timer all the way up to 25 seconds. Uh, let me go grab a test strip. Uh, so I'm gonna hold that behind my back, turn this on, uh, note my area here that I want to get my test strip in, turn it back off. 
place my test strip down in that area. What you want to do with the test strip, since I am exposing long ways like this, is to have sections that cut across your test strip uh, vertically in this instance. So I have a little bit of window, a little bit of brick, something that as I cut across in these tiny, uh, in these tiny little vertical sections, that it will have the same section of tonality and value uh, within that test strip. So here we are. Uh, let's expose for our 25 seconds. Okay, so there was our 25 second overall on the whole thing. I am going to reduce this down to let's make it even uh, and let's do five seconds. And now let's cover and just do our little sections as we were doing before. And let's do one more, giving us 50 seconds. Uh, and I'm actually not going to expose this last strip at the end because that's going to be our initial 25 seconds. Uh, so we're going to have 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50 uh, over here on this right side of the test strip. So I'm gonna go develop this up and we should definitely have something within this range uh, that's going to give us our good low contrast print. Let's see if this is gonna be our final test strip. I am hopeful that it is. We have 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50 all the way at the end. Uh, I'm actually kind of digging the way the 50 looks. Uh, our highlights are getting nice and kind of a little bit dense, which is all right. Our shadows are not fully uh, black or opaque. Um, so yeah, I think I'm actually just going to give it an even 60 seconds uh, and we are going to make a print the reason why these times seem so odd uh, is because we are printing at that lowest filter setting of double zero. So, you know, there is actually a lot more range uh, before anything gets completely uh, overexposed and too dark. Uh, so we are going to give a shot to, let's say six, I'm going to go with 70 seconds for our first hopefully final uh, of these positive prints. All right, so here we are just as before. Uh, I'm going to increase our timer all the way up to 70 seconds. There we go. Also, I have my easel set to be just a half inch shy um, of our 11 by 14 border. So we'll be almost borderless. There will be just a quarter of an inch all the way around. Uh, so let's grab a piece of paper out of our paper safe. This paper is nice and clean. Let's insert it into the top 11 by 14 insert. And then on this one, we push it all the way to the left and that will make sure that our paper is square. Close that down. Uh, we are ready to go and let's hit that 70 seconds. Uh, and now we wait for a minute. All right, we have our paper. Let's develop it up. I'm of course going to have my trusty stopwatch in hand. And uh, let's, when you put in your paper, obviously quickly get it as fully covered as possible. Start your timer. There we go. Now we're developing. And let's watch this beautiful image come in. And I'm agitating pretty gently. I don't want to encourage too much contrast coming into this. Uh, it does look a little dark on the bottom, but I'm going to show you our, uh, our final image here. And that should all hopefully still be a kind of just dark gray with plenty of image left for us to pull out in our negative. All right, there's our minute. Let's do the rest of the process. I'll meet you over by the wash. All right, that has been our minute in the fixer. So let's pull that out of there. Let it drip off. 
and let's gently put it into our wash water. Let's turn that cool water on. And let's turn on the lights. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a beautiful print here, isn't it? It is quite low contrast. Uh, we do still have our shadow details all the way down there. We are reaching almost pure white up here in our highlights, um, which may be a little bit of a challenge area, but I think it should work uh, just fine for our negative. Uh, so let's let this wash up for a couple minutes, then we will squeegee it and let it dry. So here I've got a, just a nice piece of plexiglass and I've got my big squeegee here. I'm just going to run some water along the edge of this to make sure that it is nice and clean. Run my finger along it to make sure that it is smooth and not going to scratch my paper. I'm also going to take just a little wet hand and wipe this down, get off anything from there. Make sure my squeegee is nice and smooth uh, and bring our print over. I'm brave and I like to squeegee both sides of my print. I like to lay it down with just a little corner showing off the edge of the plexi. Uh, then I will hold here and gently squeegee down. I'll come back up to the top. There we go. Just like that. Then I'll use that corner to lift the print off, squeegee off all that water, flip it over, do the same thing here, lay it down, and then hold from the top and very gently just do one smooth pass. There we go. No scratches. It's good. It will dry very quickly and nicely for us. And I'm going to bring our print over here, stick it in our drying racks. Now I want to make uh, four of these negatives. Uh, so I'm going to just make my other three uh, low contrast positives off camera. Uh, and I'll see you back at the end of that. Okay, so I've finished up my positive prints. Uh, we have, of course, the first one we started with, the building interior. I decided to do a square um, because it was a, a square medium format shot, but also I know that I'm going to need test strips uh, for my ortho film. So if I trim an 11 by 11 piece of ortho film, I can use the rest of those as my test strips um, so I'm not wasting a whole sheet just for test strips. Uh, and for this one, uh, I had two 35 millimeter shots that I wanted to do. So I wanted to save a little bit of paper. So I just made them a little smaller and I printed both of them as just a, a quick little diptych onto this sheet uh, so that I can just lay down one 11, 14 sheet of ortho film and make both the negatives at the same time. Uh, I made sure that the exposures were relatively the same. Again, everything printed as flat as I could get it, making sure that all of the highlights and the shadows still have extra detail that can be spared. Uh, so let's move on to the ortho process. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes uh, and I have let all of my prints dry. They're now ready to go and move on to the next step of the process, uh, which means it is time to start working with our ortho film. A couple of things to mention. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure that we are only using a red safe light with ortho film. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my overhead amber safe light and I'm gonna to switch to this. Uh, in addition to the little clamp light I've got over there. It's one of these, they're pretty cheap RGB video lights. I have found them at zero hue, which is basically pure red. Um, they, they are quite bright and they are safe. 
Um, so I am just going to stick it uh, up on top of one of these enlargers here. I have a little battery bank connected to it, so it should be good to go uh, for our whole printing session here. And also we are going to need uh, a contact printer of some kind. So I actually built myself a big uh, 16 by 20 contact printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy into its uh, darkroom contact printing mode. I'll take out this piece that is just a flat, it's a piece of dye bond with a piece of felt on it. I'll put that on my enlarging base over here. And then I've got my big, nice piece of glass right here. I've got this big piece of glass. I'm gonna give it a clean so it's nice and streak free. Um, get some good pieces of glass if you're gonna do this. You can use something from a frame, um, but I recommend going to a glass shop or something. They can cut you an exact piece of glass, quarter inch, uh, and they can sand and smooth the edges so it's nice and safe to use should only cost you a few dollars to go do that. So I recommend that. So this is about as bright as we can get now without our amber safe light. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Let's open it up. As far as I know, uh, the ortho film, it's not multi-grade, so it doesn't have variable contrast. It has a locked contrast. Uh, so we can just go ahead and use white light. Um, that will be totally fine. Uh, so we can make our enlarger as bright as possible. Remember, we are going to be enlarging through uh, a piece of darkroom paper. So our light does actually need to go all the way through a piece of darkroom paper. So ideally, it will be pretty bright. I'm trying to make it as bright as I can while easily fitting and overlapping the area of our paper. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. I like to focus it until the edge of that beam is perfectly sharp on the top and the bottom with plenty of overlap. So I'm a couple inches uh, all the way around uh, and that should be pretty good. So back over here at our paper safe, let's get our ortho film out. I have it taped here at the top. And I'm gonna get out three sheets uh, because that should be all that we need. So inside of our little bag, just like a small package of darkroom paper, we are going to find a little bag taped down. And inside we will have our film. Again, I like to go kind of gung ho and just turn the lights on all the time. So I am just going to take out, perfect. We do have a couple uh, little test pieces in here. So that is great. Uh, and we have plenty of film. So I'm going to grab three sheets of this. There we go, one, two, three. I am going to try not to handle this too much. I'm gonna put it into our paper safe. Let's put that in the paper safe. Very good. Let's take a couple of our test strips as well. Let's close this back up. There we go. Tuck everything in. And I'm gonna grab a fresh piece of tape and we're all safe. I also wanted to give you a quick look at an actual piece of the film. Uh, so you know what to expect. It's kind of a milky, uh, transparency, you can see my finger behind it a little bit. And the important thing to note is that there is an emulsion side and a film backing side, just like our regular 35 millimeter and other films. Uh, and the way to tell is via the color, like, or the darkness. So you can see there, that side is a little bit darker than that side. Uh, and the darker side is going to be the film backing and the lighter side is going to be the emulsion side. Um, it will make a difference in your exposure and stuff like that. So make sure lighter side remains up, ready to be exposed, and darker side is the film backing side. All right, so back over at the enlarging base, I'm making sure to have a nice anti-static brush I can use to brush off our glass, our film, our paper, 
uh, as well as a microfiber cloth if I wanted to wipe down our glass on the back and the front. Uh, so we are just about ready to go. We're going to make a new test strip uh, just like before. Test strips for contact printing can be a little complicated. I'm gonna set my timer to five seconds. I'm gonna use this print here, the one of the kind of exterior. Um, and specifically, I like that in this area here, we have both basically the darkest darks that we have in the whole print are right here. We've got the brightest highlights in the print and we're really close to the edge. So I'm actually gonna be able to overlap the film on the end uh, and make my test strips uh, maybe at a diagonal like that. So I can get little sections of each. Um, for an example, there's the light. Uh, it's quite bright. Again, we're going to need it to be quite bright. Um, so yeah, let's, let's grab a little piece of our film. I'm going to use just this whole piece here. So for contact printing, the first thing we want to do is lay down our piece of paper or film. So we're going to lay it down again with the bright side facing up, uh, making sure we're gonna be within our space here. Then I am going to lay down our test there. Again, uh, I want to have a little bit overlapping. It's just gonna make it easier for me to see. I can actually overlap on both corners. With contact printing, you are kind of going to waste uh, a little bit more. I'm not too worried about dust at this stage because we are uh, just making a test. So let me grab a piece of cardboard. We're gonna do five second intervals. We are 100% expecting this edge to be completely black. Uh, so which will also give us a baseline of knowing when our negative is also reaching pure black by having that exterior edge uh, to use as an example. See, I think just one more, there we go. Excellent, so let's carefully tilt our glass back up, lift up our print, grab our little test strip here. All right, so here we are over at the developing tray. I have my piece of film here. So let's give it a go. Start our stopwatch. And there is our exposure coming in now. Beautiful. I'm gonna let it go for a full minute. We're about 30 seconds in now. All right, there's a minute. I'm gonna put this in the stop and I'll meet you over at the fixer, which is where things get more interesting. Okay, it has been a full minute at least with our film in the stop. And here is my theory on film actually, is that for the most part, film doesn't truly need to be fully light safe, uh, either in the dark or under red light for the fixing process. Um, papers tend to need that as well, but film uh, will fully clear under daylight. It's not recommended, I don't normally do it, but just to show you, I'm going to turn on the lights. Again, knowing that this has been fully stopped, uh, it will no longer develop, and we can watch the fixing process under the overheads. Okay, so here we are. Uh, and we can watch what is actually going to happen with our film. So here we have our film. It's still pretty opaque, actually, as you can see. And as we put it in the fix, let's start a little timer. And we can see right there, it is fully clearing. It is losing. There might be a slight color tint, so it is possible that it needs to stay under the safe lights, which I'm going to do for all the rest of the processing. Um, but here you can see that it does fully clear. 
We're at about 30 seconds. I'm gonna go for a whole minute and then we can wash. It doesn't need a ton of wash time. A minute or two is all right. Uh, I'm probably gonna do five minutes of wash in cold water for these just to be safe, but we don't wanna over process it because it, it could scratch. Uh, so we need to be a little bit careful. All right, there we go. There's a full minute. It is very clear now. Uh, and we are going to put it in our wash and let that run for a minute or so. Uh, and then we can take a look. So let's take a look over here at the light table. I do have the negative we used right here in a sleeve. Uh, so we're looking up at this top left corner here. So here's five seconds down at the bottom. So we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Those are all way too dark. So I'm, I'm actually not too dissatisfied with how five is looking right now. Uh, so I'm gonna do single second test strips going four, five, six, seven. See if we can maybe get somewhere in between. Okay, so after much trial and error, I've actually found that around 12 seconds looks good. I think what ends up being easiest is to actually just cut small strips and do them for the whole length of time. Um, I think for an initial test, the test strip works well, but after that, you really just wanna dial it in. Uh, so what I've been doing here is I've been taking my loop and actually comparing this small section uh, there's a little section in my in my print here that has, you know, kind of the darkest of the darks as well as the brightest highlights kind of in one little section. So I've just been looking through the loop at that and really trying to carefully compare it to what I've been getting here. Um, and I think I, I'm very happy with the way 12 seconds is looking. So let's go ahead and make a full negative now. Okay, so now we are ready to make a final uh, piece. So what I wanna do first is make sure that the back of my glass is nice and clean. This is really where dust is going to start to enter this system and we want to try and avoid as much of that as possible. So we've got our print face up, ready to go. We can brush it off. Make sure there is no dust there. We can go in a couple different directions. Let's brush away from the glass. All right. Now let's grab our piece of film. Full sheet. Of course, making sure that it is the bright side up, not the dark side. So let's lay that down there. I'm actually gonna bring my print over here. So let's brush the print. There we go. Let's brush our film. Let's brush the print one more time because we kind of brushed toward it. There we go. Now let's gently just line up our print to our film, they should be exactly the same size, which is easy to line up. There we go. Let's give the back of the print a brush as well. There we go. A final brush on our glass. Set that down nice and gentle. We know that we're gonna be within our print window. It was a little bit off, and actually, sometimes you can find that just by shifting the glass a little bit, you can move the paper on the very top. So now I'm just making sure, yeah, there. It's perfectly aligned. Let's get rid of any dust there. Maybe give it a light wipe, and there. Now we are ready, and let's hit it. And that is time. We were a little close to the edge, but I think we're gonna be all right. Uh, and let's head over and develop it now. All right, here is our piece of film ready to go in. 
we want to just very gently slide it in and make sure it gets covered as quickly as possible. Just like, oops, it's a little sticky there. Just make sure it gets covered as quick as you can. And there we go. Let's hit our timer now. So I've actually kind of changed the way that I've been developing these a little bit. Instead of just doing a minute as normal. So what I've been doing for development, instead of uh, doing a full uh, minute, I've been doing two minutes, but I've been kind of letting it sit. So I'm only agitating it every 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, I want to promote as much development in the shadows and kind of lessen this hard development here in the highlights uh, and just slowing down your development. It's kind of like a stand development a little bit, uh, but a, a less extreme version. Yeah, this uh, bleed here is definitely not in the original, so I'm not quite sure what that is. It does look a little dark, but I believe once we look at it uh, through some light, it should look much brighter. So we're here at two minutes. I'm gonna stop, fix, and I'll meet you back over at the wash. So my camera ran out of batteries in the last shot. I'm not sure how much of it um, I'm gonna be able to save or not. Uh, so my second negative is here in the wash, the big square one, and in here, I have just a little bit of water and photo flow the same way that I would use uh, for my regular film uh, to make sure that it dries without streaks or anything nasty like that. Uh, so I just have a little tray of that here that I transfer my, uh, my film into and then I can pin it up uh, to dry overnight or you can pin it by the corner in, uh, in a film drying cabinet, which I have our first sheet in right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this second one. I think it looks very good. Maybe a tad dense, but I think that will actually work to our benefit when we go to actually use it. So there we go. Yeah, that looks beautiful. So let's get that in there. We're still emulsion side up. And just have that hang out there for a little bit and then we can hang it up uh, and make sure we don't have any bubbles. And yeah. So everything is nice and dry. Let's take a look. Here is our first one, the big one. Uh, and I'd, I'd say it looks pretty okay. Here is our original low contrast uh, positive print from it. You can see that we are still getting quite a significant amount of contrast from this. Uh, up here in the highlights, it actually is, is quite nice. It's quite close. It's just barely not pure white. We still have all of our little lines uh, from the different parts of the skylight. So that is all good. Uh, the very darkest parts down here, there's still a little bit of detail there in the shadows. Um, I think overall it just looks a little harsh and that's something to keep in mind with this process is it is not going to give you like the ultra smoothest look. There is quite a bit of grain uh, in how this high contrast film is interpreting our pretty smooth negative that we gave it. So take that with a grain of grain uh, to know that, you know, it, it is definitely going to give us a very full tonal range. Uh, it just might be a little grittier than, uh, you know, coming from the actual film negative itself. Also be very careful with these. Um, they're pretty, they actually dry extremely well and extremely fast, probably in like five minutes, just hanging by the corner uh, in the film drying cabinet. Uh, it's super, super fast. 
because uh, you know this is a process film. It's it's made for uh, quick production and masking and such. So you know, uh, keep that in mind. But it it does dry quite well. Next, we've got the diptych. And I think this one came out very well. So there is our original print. You can kind of see there. Sorry about the, the lighting. Uh, but yeah, it's, these, these prints came out quite good. Um, and I think the interpretation of them here in the film is very, very nice. Uh, on this one, you know, we have just as much shadow detail right in there. It was able to reproduce all of that really, really well. Uh, this kind of mid-tone area over here looks very good. The sharpness overall has been retained well. Um, even the little specks of rain on the umbrella have still come through. Like we saw with the last one, uh, this is quite grainy. It is a very grainy interpretation. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see how all of these do end up printing out uh, on cyanotype, uh, which will be the process that I'm, I'm hoping to do next and, and to use these negatives for. On the one of the rain on the window, it's quite good. You can see that it does increase the contrast quite a bit. Uh, but here's a great time to highlight the advantage of actually using the orthofilm as opposed to something like just paper as a paper negative. Uh, look here at like the very shadows, like the densest that we can possibly get this while it's backlit, right? It's still quite gray. There isn't much to work with here. Uh, whereas the densest part of this negative are pure black. I mean, they're fully opaque uh, the way that we would expect a typical photo negative to be. Uh, so that I believe is a huge advantage. Uh, of using orthofilm as your negatives. Finally, let's take a look at the square photo. There it is right there, and there is its positive counterpart. This one printed very nice and gray. So you can see even these brightest highlights here are still nice and gray, and our shadows are very grayed out and muted as well which I think led to probably the best of the negatives. Uh, you can see even in these highlight areas, we still are seeing some of that natural gradation. I think the grain, it's, it's still grainy, but it isn't as bad. Uh, I think this one should print quite well and quite smooth. There's maybe a speck or two of dust. You know, doing this process of, of multiple contact prints all on top of each other really lets dust be one of the major problems here. Uh, we really only have one, you know, four or five uh, little specks that probably by the time we throw this onto a cyanotype or a different process, uh, those specks are, are not really going to make a big difference. Um, I, I really love the way that the contrast in the coat uh, and this area and the hair came out. I think that little bit of grainy even helps, it, it helps sharpen it in, in a sense uh, that I think will turn out really lovely in a cyanotype. All right, so I believe that is about all that I've got for you uh, this time. I hope you were able to hopefully learn something, uh, think about some new ideas, think about different ways and different materials uh, that you can experiment with. Um, and yeah. Keep working analog, uh, keep making awesome work, and I will talk to you later. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to uh, answer them down in the comments. Have a great day.